Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys, let's actually analyze the company that was brought up by Tony Myers where he pretty much said can you do CTRA. Now before we get started with this video guys, I would just like to apologize for not uploading yesterday on Sunday because well guys, if you guys read my community post, I was very very sick. I had a terrible stomach bug so I just did not feel like doing anything i pretty much just slept the whole entire day so i'm terribly sorry for that but today i do feel a whole lot better so let's actually take a look at the company corterra and see if whether or not we would like to invest in this company based off of their fundamentals so with that said let's get started with this video all right, now before moving into any numbers, guys, Corterra is an independent oil and gas company engaged in the development, exploration, and production of oil, natural gas, and natural gas liquids in the United States. So you guys already know I absolutely love my energy companies. I mean, my best performer in my entire portfolio is Chevron. It's up like $8,000 like in just capital gains, not including dividends. So I really do like my oil companies. I don't believe that oil is going to go anywhere in the near future. So let's actually check out this company even further. Now they did have earnings as of November 3rd. I don't want to take a look exactly at all of their earnings report, but here's a quick summary of their earnings. We got the EPS normalized actual $1.42, which is a beat by three cents. EPS gap actual $1.51, beat by 17 cents. Revenue came in at $2.52 billion, which was a beat by 120 26.5 million dollars so now let's actually come into the calculator we got the ticker symbol for ctra market cap of 452.62 million dollars so a really really small company a p of 32.7 which is massive now this is with a share price of 24 dollars and 85 cents and now this isn't surprising because energy has just been skyrocketing within these past couple years right on the one year they're up almost 30 percent on the year to date they're up 35.88 percent 52 week range is between $17.19 to $35.25 so we're pretty much smack in the middle of this 52 week range now they do pay out a dividend of 60 cents which becomes a yield of 2.45 percent a pair ratio of 45.77 a five-year CAGR of take a look at this 28.69 percent with six consecutive years of dividend payment so if they're able to continue this almost 30 percent five-year CAGR into the future guys that is a massive massive yield especially since well right now they only pay around 60 cents in annual dividends per share ex dividend date passed as of november 15th pay date was on november 30th and they pay their dividends quarterly now based off of their total common shares outstanding they pay out guys 473.1 million dollars in dividends every single year and unfortunately based off of their five-year average free cash flow this is negative 44.7 million dollars however as of their last year's free cash flow it is almost 466 million dollars so as you can see they really ramped up their free cash flow rather recently now these payout ratios come out to be 50.38 percent based off of their last year's free cash flow and 110 percent for the five-year average so on the five-year average they can't afford this at all however on the last year's free cash flow it seems like they're able to so far so now coming into the fundamentals we got the net income five years ago of 100.4 million dollars to one year ago of 1.2 billion dollars guys that is an increase of 1053 percent which is just massive i mean just take a look at this graph they went up a pretty big amount from five to four years ago and then a pretty decent amount pretty consistently honestly from four to three years ago they collapsed two years ago probably because of the whole covid thing and the lack of demand so that's perfectly understandable and then they just did a massive jump the following year going from 201 million dollars to 1.2 billion dollars as i said so there's a lot of outliers here i'm not necessarily liking it some of them are understandable however some of them aren't so for that reason guys i'm gonna have to give this like a 40 percent coming now into the free cash flow we see something similar to that of the net income though we see a lot more outliers so we got five years ago of 133.6 million dollars to one year ago of 939 million dollars as an increase of 603 percent with an average of 428.4 million dollars now take a look at this graph guys pretty consistent increase from five to four 
massive jump from four to three, collapsed because of two years ago, perfectly understandable, and then a massive jump again to one year ago. So for this reason, guys, I'm gonna have to give this, I'm gonna give this a little bit higher than that of this, mainly because, well, from here to here, there really isn't that much of a difference. I mean, it's only $300 million or so. So I'm gonna have to give this a 45%. Coming now into the revenue, five years ago of 1.7 billion to one year ago of 3.67 billion increase of 110.04% which taking a look at this graph we can see that well they were going up five to four then they came down four to three then they came down three to two and then they spiked up again so not necessarily liking this at all I'm gonna have to go with like a 35% on this one total assets minus total liabilities this one is looking fairly interesting because as of today they're up a significant amount 12.67 billion dollars even one year ago they were still pretty high at 11.78 billion dollars however from five to two years ago guys they were barely breaking the 2.5 billion dollars in fact they only broke it one time that was five years ago but then out of nowhere one year ago and today this massively jumped again perfectly understandable because of the high oil demand as well as the shortage of oil to, to just begin with in general but nonetheless guys that is a massive massive increase which i'm not necessarily liking average total assets around 10.68 billion dollars average liabilities is 4.5 billion dollars and doing this difference we get 6.2 billion dollars i'm gonna have to give this guys like a 30 percent mainly because these two outliers I do not know if they are going to be sustainable in the future. Looking now at the cash flow minus the total liabilities, we could see something very, very interesting here. And that, well, we could see that their lowest point was two years ago at negative $7.9 billion. However, they have had instances where they have brought it back up at least closer and closer to zero. So you can see from four to three years ago, they did get a little bit closer to zero. And in fact, going from two to one year ago, this also occurred. So not looking too bad though. Again, this massive decrease right here possibly could have been because the cash flow two years ago went down to 202 million dollars and then in addition to just getting a whole lot of debt as well average cash flow minus the average liabilities we get around negative 4.1 billion dollars i'm gonna have to give this guys like a 35 percent well actually no i'm gonna have to go with like i'm gonna have to go with like a 50 percent just because they have been showing instances of bringing this closer and closer to zero coming down to the shares outstanding this one it is interesting because well five years ago guys to two years ago they were actually decreasing it however they did a massive spike two years ago to one year ago and then now they're decreasing it again we got five years ago 460.6 million shares to today of 788.5 million shares that is an increase in the five year of 71.2 percent and from the previous year to the current year that is a decrease of negative 3.1 percent so in the five-year scale this is looking very very bad however you can clearly see that they are bringing this down but then again i don't necessarily know if they will continue to, to do this because even though in the time when they were decreasing these shares right from five to two years ago from three to two they actually increased it a little bit going from 397.9 to 398.9 so definitely something to, to think about overall i'm gonna have to give this i mean i have to give this like a 20 percent because guys this is a massive massive increase on the five-year scale even though sometimes they are buying them back and lastly, when it comes to the cash and equivalents, they hold $778 million, an average of $439.42 million. Looking at the total weighted grade, guys, given the income, 40%, free cash flow, 45%, revenue, 35%, assets minus liabilities, 30%, cash flow minus liabilities, 50%, and shares outstanding at 20% for an overall grade of 37%. So now let's come over here and make some assumptions. Low, medium, high using revenue growth, the projected share buyback, and the required rate of return. Now, coming over here, guys, to this growth in Seeking Alpha, we can see that the forward is 75.77%. I'm sorry, but I do not believe this. There's just no feasible way that this could actually happen. I mean, sure, within the past couple of years, we have seen a massive spike when it comes to oil, mainly because of the shortage of oil supply. Will this continue, though? That is the question. Possibly not. Things tend to come back to normal at some point in the future. At least, that's what we have seen in the past. So, we have to take those assumptions into account. So, for that reason, I'm going to have to go with the revenue growth, guys, of like three, four, 
and 5% for the low, medium, high. And then for the projected share buyback, we have seen that they have issued, but they've also, but we've also seen that they have bought back. So let's just go with negative two within the next four years, zero and 2% within the next four years for the low, medium, high assumption. Basically saying that they'll issue shares at negative 2%, do not buy back any shares at all or issue any shares and then buy back 2% of shares. Now, based off of this, guys, we get the target share prices, $49.18 to $55, essentially, from low to high. Now, adjusting for debt, this comes down to $47.78, all the way up to $53.42, margin of safety of 5, 10, 15%. This puts me between $40.61 to $50.70. So with the current share price of $24.85, this is looking like a pretty good buy. However, guys, understand that every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. The calculator is telling me that it is a buy right now. However, those weighted grades do not, right? I mean, their fundamentals are pretty lackluster. They've had a lot of outliers, especially in the most recent years. So this may actually come down back down to earth in the next upcoming years or so. So you definitely have to be careful with that. That's why in my personal opinion, I'm not necessarily liking this company. Even though the calculator is telling me that it's a good buy right now, the fact of the matter is that their fundamentals just aren't there. Now, as I just said, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And of course, this is not financial advice. So please have this calculator and make your own assumptions, make your own weighted grades, because again, this is not financial advice. So please have this and see where your numbers land. I also have my book value calculator the revaluation calculator and a dividend tracking sheet for anybody who wants to track their dividends or just capital gains on like a spreadsheet. I think it's pretty cool. I essentially just made it with the help of a macro by another YouTuber. I have a video guys pretty much showing how to set it up. So if you guys would like that, make sure to check that video out. All I'm asking for in return for these calculators and daily content, occasionally daily content. Again, I'm ter so terribly sorry for not being able to upload on Sunday. All I'm asking for in return, guys, is just like, subscribe, comment. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube. Thank you so much for everybody who have subscribed, liked, everybody who's just supportive. I really, really do appreciate it. Who leaves comments. I really do appreciate it. Never thought I would get to this point in my YouTube career, I guess you could say. You know, I never thought we'd break even 100. So thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. That's why I'm more than happy to give out these calculators. I don't have any sponsorships. The best way you guys can help me is just like, subscribe, comment. It really does help. Now taking a look at this dividend, they don't have a pretty big dividend. However, seeing that the share price might be undervalued, let's see what we get. Putting in $5,725, this buys you 239.39 shares for an annual payout of $138.24 quarterly of $34.56 and a monthly of $11.52. My personal opinion, this could be a whole lot better. I mean, there are ones out there that have less yet. The yield is so high that you're getting in like the $300 per year. So that's my personal opinion. I think you could do a whole lot better when it comes to this kind of company. All in all, thank you so much for this recommendation. I do like my oil companies, but this one just isn't doing it for me. Their fundamentals just aren't there. Even though the calculator is telling me to buy, it just really isn't there for me. Maybe in the future, if they prove themselves that they are able to be consistent with their fundamentals, we might actually take a look at this and I might actually be excited for it. But anyways, guys, that pretty much is it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help out with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on YouTube sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out. And I'll see you all in the next stock analysis a video.